part of it's because of uh, music, which we love, and I know many of you do too. Uh, I figured out, I'm not going to tell you anybody else's age besides Clyde, but I figured out yesterday, in this band, there's over 700 years of playing music professionally. Now, we don't use printed music in this group. I think everybody here can read music, but we don't need to for what we do. To a jazz musician, written music is sort of like religion. A list of the way you've got to do everything according to somebody else. And uh, we're not into that, either as a church or as music. Instead, with our group, we improvise. We listen to the music, and then we create and that's really the essence of a real life with the only true God. We learn to listen to Jesus, and many times he creates something new using our mind and our personality and our talents. Some of you here today are artists, some of you are writers, some are musicians, all kinds of different things. We even have an accountant with us, a bean counter. Many of the, but he's from out of town. Many of the early jazz groups didn't use printed music. Somebody would get an idea for a song, and they'd teach the band, and they'd experiment with it, and they'd put it together. And I walk my uh, grandson, Irwin, to school every morning. We have a great time for about 45 minutes walking to Langston Hughes. And the other day, Thursday, I think, walking back, God just gave me this simple little song that we're going to do this morning, and you get to participate. I'm going to start and stop the band a couple of times. It's a very simple little eight-bar blues, and we're going to do this like the early bands did, like Jay McShann's band and Count Basie. Uh, this is how a lot of their arrangements came about. No written music, but you're just doing it like this. And I talked it over with the folks before, so we got a little idea of what we're going to do. But we're going to do it for you now. Are you ready, Paul?
about as simple as uh, you can get. You know, we have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. That's a scripture verse that's magically appearing on the slide. God is love, and the person who abides in or hangs out with God hangs out with love. That's really what we get to do. Many of you know this verse. If you don't, if you watch football today, you'll see it in the stands. John 3, 16. This is how God loved the world. And the original Greek word for world there is cosmos, K-O-M-O-S, which means everyone who has ever been created forever, past, present, and future. God gave his only son, Jesus, so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. We don't hear much about this next verse. God sent his son into the world not to judge and not to condemn. One version says, not to point an accusing finger or tell the world how bad it was, but to save the world through him. If you've ever had any concept that God is watching you and judging you and condemning you, that is a lie straight from the pit of hell. And you can just get rid of that and not think that anymore. Jesus literally came and did it all 2,000 years ago at the cross. He finished it. He did everything necessary and everything possible to make you right with him forever. And there's one word for that. It's called grace. We're going to sing about that now. Personified. Jesus personified his grace. And I'm going to say it again. I can't say it too many times. He has already done everything. Don't think you've got to do something to clean up your act to make God like you or get right with it. He has done it all spiritually for you to have a relationship with him. And even though we still screw up, have you noticed that? Some of us do. The guys who have been in my band for a long time have. They watch me. But no matter how much you screw up, 
God still loves you. Your badness can never overcome his goodness. It just can't. You can't do anything so bad that God won't continue to love you and give you grace. That's why it's called amazing grace. God's not a morality cop. He's not a judge. He's not vindictive. He's not punitive. He is love. Pure, unconditional, totally accepting love. And what he has done since before creation, since before creation, is to love you. He had you personally in his mind before he created you. And he created you so you could experience his love and life and grace all the time, here, right now, and in the life after. He wants you just to experience that to the max. Now, some of you might be saying, what's the catch? Here's the catch. Ain't none. All he asks of you is to believe. That's it. I'm not making this stuff up, folks. This is all from Scripture. I'm not listening to my life today. All he asks of you to do is to believe. When you believe that, it, it is objectively true. When you believe it, it becomes subjectively true for you, and you get to enjoy it. You won't ever experience it if you don't believe it. When you believe it, you do. Once you believe it, you start what we call a personal relationship with Jesus, where you literally get to know him intimately, and he talks to you. And many of you know this. Like he, the other day, he said, Paul, here's this song I want you to do, this very simple little thing. Generally, when he talks to me, it's about simple stuff, because I'm a pretty simple person. But he relates to all of us wherever we are. And we get to know him. We listen to him. We talk to him. He talks to us. We're in his presence all the time, everywhere we go. And he talks to us. And you know what he says most of the time? I love you. Doesn't make any difference what you just did. Yeah, if you screwed up there. Maybe you hurt somebody's feelings. We need to go talk to them and apologize and work that out. But I love you. I always love you. He loves you, man. We're going to do another great old hymn that many Dixieland bands used over 100 years ago. We're going to do it for you now, our version. It's originally called Just a Closer Walk with Me.
years ago, they called it Just a Closer Walk with Me. Today's language, if we were to write that, we would say hanging out with Jesus. That's what it means. Literally. When you enter into a personal relationship with Jesus, a closer walk with him, you literally experience his unconditional love and grace and goodness 24-7. And one of the greatest things that comes of that is you start to love other people like he does. And he loves everybody. He literally will start to love other people through you. God wants you to experience his unconditional love, no strings attached, so you'll enjoy it so much, you'll want to give it to others. You'll want your friends to love and enjoy and experience him too. You'll want your friends and your family and everybody else to know that God loves them and he's done it all for them. Now, life does go on. You know, when you start a personal relationship with Jesus, bad things will still happen to you. You can be a preacher. People will talk so loud nobody else can hear. And then you'll say things like that that insult them. And then you'll feel bad and have to apologize. But he's with you. And as you get to know him better and better, you'll enjoy him more and more. And you'll be okay. Even when your circumstances and situations are not what you'd like. Now, we're going to play a couple of more songs for you. Three of them, actually. Just to enjoy. And I'm going to say a couple of words about each song so you can see how they loosely tie into what we're doing here today. There's a great old Dixieland tune called Back Home Again in Indiana. When we were on the road, Clyde and I and Paul Miller were on the road together, we averaged over 500 performances a year for four years, and sometimes five a day in different places. Not exaggerating. And we would always play this song, Back Home Again in Indiana, but we would change the title of it to wherever we were playing. One night it would be Back Home Again in Little Rock. The next night it would be Back Home Again in Dallas. Well, the spiritual application here today is we all have a spiritual home. Inside of this divine triune circle dance of love and grace and joy with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's really our real home right now. So let's enjoy back home again in paradise. <laughs> 